What about infrared saunas? Infrared saunas or traditional saunas? The infrared ones. Infrared. So infrared saunas are a type of sauna that is using, it's using, you know, essentially infrared radiation, right, infra, infrared wavelengths to heat up the body. And so they're not very hot. So if you look at like the ambient temperature in an infrared sauna, it goes up to like 140 degrees Fahrenheit, which is very different from a traditional sauna. So infrared saunas don't have all the same benefits as a traditional hot sauna, something that maybe goes up to 175, 180 degrees Fahrenheit unless you are staying in that infrared sauna for like a very long time, perhaps even twice as long as you would or more in a traditional sauna. The interesting thing about infrared saunas, I would say, um, so a colleague of mine, a collaborator of mine, Dr. Ashley Mason, she's at UCSF, and she's been doing what's called the heat bed study. And it's an infrared sauna that is essentially a head out heat bed. So your whole body is in this infrared sort of bed but your head is out of it. So your head's not in it. And people, um, she's done, she's now done a couple of studies and the most recent study has been done in people with major depressive disorder. So they have depression and these people are, are doing an infrared sauna to a pretty extreme degree. So she's elevating their core body temperature by around two degrees. So they're essentially getting in a somewhat feverish state. And in order to do that, I mean, these people are in this infrared sauna for well over an hour. So not like most people that are doing infrared saunas. They're probably staying there for like 20, 30 minutes, right? So people are getting very, very hot to the, to the point where their core body temperature is going up to, you know, increasing to um, like one, one and a half to two degrees, right? And she's looking at the effects on depression. And so what she has found is kind of amazing is that people that are doing this infrared sauna, this heat bed, and doing cognitive behavioral therapy, CBT, they are experiencing massive antidepressant effects. So there's something called the Hamilton scale, which is like a battery of tests that are done to assess depression. And just to give you like um, some, some sort of basis of like, if, you, if there's something considered clinically significant, then you have like a three point change on that scale. Well, essentially, this infrared sauna plus the cognitive behavioral therapy improved the Hamilton scale, you know, assessment by 16 points. And these are people that did four or eight rounds of it. So it was over the course of either one month or two months. Some people just couldn't finish it because it is pretty intense. Like you're, you're heating your body up quite a lot and you're sitting in this, you know, infrared sauna for over an hour. And it's, it's, a, it's a pretty intense. But the magnitude of effect on the antidepressant effect was, it's, it's stunning. And this kind of all stems back from her mentor, Dr. Charles Raison, his research that um, was essentially like an infrared sauna. So he did something, this was, you know, back in 2016. He did this study where he put people in this sort of infrared sauna-like thing and it, it elevated their core body temperature, again, by about two, two degrees. There are people with major depressive disorder. Or he gave them a sham control. So it was kind of hot, and people were thinking they were getting the treatment, but it was actually a placebo, okay? It was enough for them to think they were getting the treatment, but it wasn't ele elevating their core body temperature enough. And they did one treatment of this, okay? And he showed that the people that did one treatment of this had an antidepressant effect that lasted six weeks later after one treatment. Sham control didn't get this. Beautiful study, um, you know, Ashley kind of followed on that study and showed multiple sessions of it really had an even more robust effect. But I say this because I don't want to like, I don't want to like say infrared saunas aren't great. However, there's a lot of benefits that have been related to more hot traditional types of saunas, Finnish saunas, for example, traditional saunas that are, that are hotter, right? And so you're staying in these 175, 180 degree sauna for like 20 minutes. And it's associated with, you know, lower cardiovascular rated mortality. So if you, you're doing it four to seven times a week, um, that's associated with a 60, sorry, 50% lower cardiovascular related mortality versus doing it one time a week. Or all cause mortality, it's associated with 40% lower all cause mortality versus doing it one time a week. So 
What's going on there? Right, exactly. What's going on there? And so the 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 really fascinating thing to me about this deliberate heat exposure from a sauna is that it is sort of mimicking moderate intensity aerobic exercise. And this has actually been shown. It's been compared head to head to moderate intensity like cycling on a stationary bike. A lot of the physiological responses, so your core body temperature goes up, your heart rate goes up, right? When you're exercising, your heart rate goes up. Same thing happens when you're in a hot sauna, your heart rate goes up. Your cardiac output is increased, right? Your blood flow is increasing. All these things are happening and they're very similar. Exercise, heat stress. You're sweating, right, to cool down your, your body. So it's a way of sort of mimicking this moderate intensity exercise. That doesn't really happen in an infrared sauna if you do the same amount of time as you're doing in a hot sauna. Now, perhaps if you increase that time, it would happen. But there's all these benefits that are happening with just doing a deliberate heat exposure from a sauna that seem to not only sort of mimic cardiovascular exercise, but they add on to it. So we were talking about cardiorespiratory fitness and how important that is for longevity, right? Where there have been studies that have looked at people that exercise on a stationary bike or they exercise on a stationary bike and then follow that up with a 15-minute sauna. And it's been shown that those people that do the 15-minute sauna on top of the exercise have a more, a higher improvement in their cardiorespiratory fitness. They have more improved um, levels of their, their cholesterol and lipids. Their blood pressure improvements were greater. So there's this additive effect of adding on the deliberate heat exposure with the exercise that isn't happening with exercise alone. So again, that's sort of just more evidence of why, you know, doing a deliberate heat exposure like a sauna, in fact, hot tubs, that's something that's also been shown to improve blood pressure. In fact, a study just came out a couple of weeks ago showing that a hot tub is very beneficial for improving blood pressure, for doing all the same things that a sauna does, which is kind of exciting because not everyone has a sauna. I heard that you sometimes rehearse important talks and studies in saunas. Yeah. I mean, this started back when I was in graduate school. Um, I used to go to this, I lived across the street from a YMCA and I used to go to this sauna and use the sauna before I would go into my lab and do experiments. And there's a couple things I noticed. One, I was able to handle stress better. My stress of, you know, failed experiments, mentors putting all this pressure on me, all that stuff, right? If I went to the sauna beforehand, I was very much it's like I was more resilient to the stress. Mm -hmm. And that was when I started to look into the effects on the brain. And that's where I also am very interested in depression research as well, right? Because you're, you're causing like brain resilience. But um, once I started to realize like this is affecting my mood, this is affecting my ability to handle stress, I was using the sauna like every day. I mean, I was like religious about it. It was crazy. I mean, it was like six to seven days a week I was going in that sauna. And because it was like using it every day, you have to multitask. You only have so much time in the day, right? And so I'd start rehearsing my presentations, like going through them in my mind while I'm sitting in the sauna with these other people from the YMCA who probably think I'm crazy because I'm sitting here like saying things. But I noticed that I was able to remember things better if I had gone through them in my head with the heat. And it wasn't until many, many years later. I mean, I kept doing that. Like, even sometimes when I travel and I'm giving a presentation or a talk, I'll get in the hot bath in my hotel room, and I'll just lay in the hot bath, and I just go through my talk in my head. Or I'll, like, look at my notes, and, like, if I forget something, I'll go through it in my head. And it wasn't until several years later that I started looking into the science behind that. Like, there's something going on here. What is going on? And I found that, actually, when you go into the sauna— so there's a lot of physiological changes that happen. Growth hormone goes up. Um, in fact, it, depending on the, the temperature and duration, growth hormone can go up anywhere between twofold to like 16-fold, like insane levels of, of growth hormone. But there's something else that goes up called IGF-2. And that is associated with improving memory and learning. And so there have been animal studies that have done this. And so I've kind of connected the dots here and go, maybe that's why. I don't really know why. I mean, sometimes just like a very strong emotional response can sort of help you remember something. Mm -hmm. And you are, at the end of the day, causing a very strong stress response when you're getting in the heat. So I like to use the sauna for a lot of things. I do, I do it. It depends on the day. Sometimes I do it. I like to do it before bed. So I'll do like the hot tub or the sauna. It improves sleep. It improves my sleep. And that has to do with the growth hormone. It has to do with 
what are called somnogenic cytokines. These are infl inflammatory molecules that are made that are that cause sleepiness. So if you think about when you're when you're sick and you have you know inflammation going on when you're when you have an illness, you're very tired. You're sleepy. You're producing a lot of what are called somnogenic cytokines. These are cytokines that are involved inflammation uh, molecules that are involved in making you sleepy. Those are also produced when you are undergoing deliberate heat exposure, like a hot tub, or and that's been shown. Uh, as well as a sauna. So sometimes I like to do the sauna at night, like to relax and help help my sleep. Sometimes I like to do it after a workout um, to extend my, you know, my workout like the study I talked about where you're improving your cardiorespiratory fitness as well. 